But I, I just want to point out two things because everybody thinks this is a negative. Like, especially let's talk about Coinbase. This is such a positive for Coinbase. Okay. I was going to say, I think there's an opportunity here. No, this is an I opportunity. Agree. I agree. So what's going on is that if Binance, the big competitor to Coinbase, gets shut down, just like TikTok gets shut mm -hmm. down for Meta, this mm -hmm. is a similar thing going mm -hmm. on. So today I actually sold puts, uh, and they're paying you some crazy fucking amount. It's what's like 30%. Premium? It's some wow. crazy amount for the till 2024 January puts. It's around 30%, dude, uh, 25, 30%. I was like, so I can buy Coinbase at like 35 bucks, even if it drops in tanks. That, that company's not going away. Literally, the SEC has to say, I'm taking a risk. Yes. The SEC yeah. has to get rid of Coinbase. That's what they have to do. Okay. That's the only way this. Would that ever happen? Would that ever happen? What's the odds that it would happen? Uh, look, uh, I think the it's very low. What? I think what's going to happen is Coinbase is going to get fined. They're going to have to remove Cardano, which is Cardano is going to suffer, Carlos. That's obvious. They're going to have mm. to remove maybe Solano or stop the staking. Those coins are going to suffer because they're going to be removed from platform. You're still going to have Bitcoin, Ethereum, which are the kings, which mm -hmm. went up today, by the way. Bitcoin went up 5% today. Which is what we've been saying, just right? FYI. And, and think about all this time. We've been saying just focus on those two and it's smooth sailing. Why you did Bitcoin go up? What's the logic? Because Bitcoin is the savior. All these shit coins that are staking, they're going to be kicked off of Coinbase. The market already sees what's going on. And Coinbase is going to have to scale back its operation. It might lose some money in the interim, but it's going to be the only player in the United States. Bitrix just went bankrupt. I think another, another several uh, exchanges went bankrupt. Who's left? It's Coinbase. They're and also take all, it. all of those, all of those shit coins get their value against Ethereum. They're like their value is, is calculated based on, on Ethereum or Bitcoin's value. So why not just buy those two and let all the other stuff just, just melt away? Guess who bought some Coinbase? I did. <laughs> so did your girl 329,000 shares in ARK KK 53,000 in ARK W yeah she's actually buying the shares I'm actually just I'm actually just selling puts because I think at $35 what they're paying you right now it's crazy amounts like 15 bucks for $50 stock they're All right. paying I, you I gotta I gotta money. interrupt really quickly yeah, go ahead. I'll make uh, congratulations on 20k followers my wife uh, sent me this thing and here is a uh, here's some oh cookies for you some which I will like probably Ali have to eat <laughs> They're, right. they're, they're strawberry short cookies. Damn, twenty thousand amidst the legit. He's the real deal here. That's Dude, nice. Congrats. Man. Well, congrats, you got you guys helped. So thank thank you to all of us. Been, We're just riding your coattails. I didn't do shit. It cost me ten thousand dollars to ride those coattails, but they don't listen to me. I'm like just, just unsub from this guy. <laughs> Chris is gonna eat all my cookies. Chris is gonna. Right, Chris, you, no, you need to send those to New Jersey, bro. Those are my cookies. Chris, your wife Chris, made me cookies. Let's see if I can do it. Pass a cookie. This way. Uh, Tanner, you asked me if we're taking calls. Yeah, it, it, when we have 15 minutes left, we'll take calls. Make a hop on. So yeah. So, so I, I do want to finish the point that Coinbase seems to be the one, the lead player. That if they get through this, that's a big F, of course. But if they get through this, who's left? Uh, Gemini is in the same situation, by the way. That's the that's the brothers. What are they named? The Win Winklevoss brothers. Winklevoss. Yeah. They also were staking, by the way, and I was staking on Gemini for a bit. So they, I don't know why they're not getting sued right now, but there's probably a lawsuit in there for them at some point too. So. The point is you're left with Coinbase and maybe Gemini and uh, everybody else is screwed. Uh, but, but the other part of it, too, is I think um, what, what is desperately needed, just like we talk about with the, you know, the, the weed stocks, they need a, a official regulation that will yes. allow these institutions to finally just lay the ground rules. Tell everybody what the ground rules are with respect to how, what you can invest in Bitcoin, what you can invest in Ethereum, what the tax implications right. are, the holding period. Is it a security, right? Or is, is it a commodity? Like, just establish what everything is, and then I think we're off to the races. I, I mean, I've been looking to get another entry point, and so I'm, I'm happy. I actually want Bitcoin and Ethereum to take. I was pissed. Okay. That it was still eighteen hundred. How the fuck is Ethereum still holding well, eighteen hundred, man? Because Gensler did. I don't know if you guys remember this, but uh, maybe three years ago now, he said Ethereum was not a security. Bitcoin and Ethereum. He actually said that. So I, it doesn't mean it has to hold still and they could right. still sue and uh, go after Vitalik or whatever. But at this point, Ethereum is in the free and clear because it wasn't in the list of tokens. I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. So if, if if you guys want to know the biggest bull case for Coinbase, I'm going to share the screen real quick. And I'll, I'll literally this is one right there. BlackRock. I'm glad someone put it in the chat because I completely forgot about that. BlackRock. Or you can just call them government rock because at this point they do pretty much all the dirty work for the government is partnered with Coinbase. So no way in hell that um, Coinbase is going anywhere. BlackRock will literally make two phone calls and you'll have a senator to make another phone call and regulators will back the fuck off. Can I send, you, can I, 
I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm going to send you something in the private chat. Scared the fuck out of me yesterday with with uh, BlackRock. Well, but it's Carlos, a show. Uh, yeah, show that. But I, I want to point to what you were saying that we need regulation. We needed to obviously get through this yeah. hump of crypto. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing is, the halving is coming up in tw the 24 May. and a half. May, and, yeah. So it's funny if Coinbase escapes this and Bitcoin and Ethereum escape this. This is the perfect thing they need because crypto always has every four years some big event. Right. Every two, three years, there's just massive events that tank it. If they escape this, oh my God, 2024, 20, 25, it might be massive. I think massive for crypto. Absolutely. Here, ch uh, check check this out real quick, Amit. Uh, Go to on. the private chat. Oh, I just, just um, so can you see this? Yes. Can you guys? Yeah. Happen, yep. So this is like, a, it, it's it's like, remember when it was like the, the, the countdown to the Olsen twins turning 18? You remember that? <laughs> this is like. This is leading up to that. We have 324 days, 18 hours, 59 minutes until 48,000 blocks until the next Bitcoin having. I'm going to let that creepy comment go about the Olsen twins. You don't remember <laughs> that? that was like, <laughs> back in the day, people with those cre creepsters hadn't. Had I was not following that. <laughs> anyway, it was, it was a big thing back in the day. Like, you don't know. Anyway, Friday, April 26, 2024, they, uh, Bitcoin halves again. And that, like you said, it could be the perfect storm. It all comes together. I think it's all coming together. Regulation, yeah. the having, forget it. So are you green guys energy, at all? right? Green energy, you know, you get you get a lot of a uh, um, uh, free energy or clean energy that allows you to mine. Oh man, this could what's be the full bear case for Coinbase? Like, I know we're excited about it; we can get it pretty cheap if we buy cash secured puts or sell uh, puts. What, what's the bear? How does this stock go to like seven bucks, ten bucks? Is there crypto returns. It's all based on Bitcoin. This is the thing. Like, it's a proxy, right? We talked about this. Yeah. But but the lower it goes, remember. So that that's why I'm selling it. I think at thirty five bucks, it's just stupid. But imagine it even goes lower. Imagine it's ten dollars. In in if this it continues and just plays out for a year, year and a half before the before Bitcoin runs. What happens when Bitcoin runs? Coinbase runs. Yeah. Okay. So that's they're interconnected. But having said that, like uh, I've always said, just buy more Bitcoin and Ethereum. But if Coinbase is some stupid valuation and they're going to get it down to like I don't know five billion or whatever, some stupid valuation. I think it's going to be easy money in like a, two, a year and a half. It's still a long play, but it's still a year and a half, two years, but it's going to be easy money if they survive. Play that play that short real quick. It popped up on my feed yesterday. The one in the private chat? Yeah, this is like in the dude's own words. This is like his own words. Just to, just listen to this guy talk. This guy's the scariest guy on the planet. This guy and the head of the, the World Economic Forum. BlackRock, we are forcing behaviors. If you don't achieve these levels of impact in your compensation could be impacted okay you have to force behaviors and if you don't force behaviors whether it's gender or race or just any way you want to say the composition of your team what you're going to be impacted and ultimately <laughs> it's still going to take time but i am just as much shocked as ken is that we have not seen more opportunities we're going to have to force change how do you force change, though? How do you do something more radical? Have you thought about that? As the board of American Express thought about more radical things we could do to enhance diversity and inclusion. Every citizen of the firm has to understand what is acceptable behaviors and what are unacceptable behaviors. If we are not a mirror of our, who our clients are, we're going to fail. You have to force behaviors. and Bro, that guy is. Who is, there? Who is he? I didn't get it. Is Let's he think. That's like Frank from Black. Oh man! So basically, okay. Now he's talking about the diversity and inclusion, but he's saying you got to force behaviors, and they own five to seven percent of basically every company on the planet. That, yeah, that the, the music, Broccoli economy. Bob. I know the music. They, yeah, they should have put Molly Cyrus behind it, and it wouldn't have been as horrible. But like, damn man. Well, he, he sounded like a Nazi yeah. during that race thing that he said. <laughs> well, yeah, because what they would. This was like a panel on ESG on how they're using ESG to essentially force companies to right. to doing what they want. It's, it's a way of getting companies to do what they want that I was the, very I think, interesting go ahead Chris. i think the wor the worst part about that whole thing is that it just goes to show you that the people <laughs> who you're electing they're not actually the exactly. ones that control shit yeah. which is scary because in a democracy you think that your voice your vote actually means something and then guys like him come along and says look your vote means nothing we can yeah. push society the way that we want to in the direction that we want to based on nothing but using your own money against you like the way that blackrock makes its money is that they take all this money from institutions that like my pension fund like i i, I have a pension fund all my money, I have no no voting, voting rights in that pension fund. That pension fund invests with BlackRock. BlackRock then 
elects people to be on the board of certain companies and says, look, CEO, you have these goals that you need to have. You need to have this many people. You need to have a pride month. You need to have this display. You need to do this. Mm -hmm. And they basically normalize a lot of the stuff that's going on. I'm not saying the stuff that they're normalizing is bad. I think some of it is good, the mm -hmm. progress that's being made. But then I don't like the fact that this is not society that's driving the change. It's a, uni it's a unilateral person deciding to change for us who's not elected, who's not even has- No has, term limits. No term limits. Like it's crazy. But also the valuations in the in the chat, ESG, that's what ESG was created for. It was a public way of basically shaming companies. When Tesla got like the lowest possible score on ESG, that's when you know that it's just, it's bullshit, right? Um, how did Tesla get the lowest score? Total bullshit. Yep. How, well, did, Tesla, how did they determine that? Well, they determined it because uh, it was like they, they um, disproportionately. The diversity of like the board or something? If, no, if they he, disproportionately weighed the social aspect of it. They focused on certain um, certain issues or lawsuits within the company claiming, uh, say, discrimination. racial discrimination stuff? Discrimination or bullying and completely ignored what they're doing on the yeah, environment. Exxon has better ESG Exxon, score right. than Exxon, right. Uh, Exxon got higher what? ESG score than, than Tesla, Tesla that Tesla. year. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, say to yourself. Mm. Now, now, understand this. Like, we know what's really happening, but most people will just look at the ESG score because you know what it's like? It's a very easy way for, say, public and retail investors. To, it's like a credit score, right? It doesn't tell the whole story, but it's a number that you can put on a company and you can just say uh, they're good or bad. Thumbs up, thumbs down. You know. I think what's worse. I think horrible. what's worse is that these unelected officials and everything else, they can push into some seriously bad decisions. I think the reason why they do this, though, is a lot more nefarious in that they don't, I don't think Larry Fink gives a shit about ESG or diversity or anything. What yeah. he's doing is providing cover for it, the companies out there so that you can make legislative changes where it enriches the few and the elite. Like, like right now, if you look at BlackRock, BlackRock right now is liquidating all the treasuries and everything from Silicon Valley Bank. Like they've been given that task, right? When the when the um, when the federal government needed to buy bonds in the open market during COVID, they were they actually tasked BlackRock to go out and buy corporate bonds on their behalf. The Treasury did that. Just imagine the level of control that BlackRock has now. Let's just tailor that back into Coinbase. If BlackRock is a partner, Coinbase ain't going nowhere. So I think you're thirty. I think your uh, puts are relatively safe and congratulations on making 30%. Who? Are you talking to me? You. Yeah. Those puts are going to expire worthless. I think they'll expire worthless. Even if it went down, I, I, I've i always said Coinbase under 50 bucks is just where it's sort of like buying some of it. It got to 35 at one point, I think like eight months ago. Oh, I actually did not see it. So I'm not, I, wasn't, I wasn't tracking it for a long time. Even though me and Carlos were in a long, when it first IPO'd, we were made a mistake of buying into it, but I sold out early enough where I got out and did not see the absolute carnage that happened to coinbase so i didn't yeah. even know it hit 35 mm -hmm. bucks but now absolutely i'm interested but the way i'm interested is if i sell these puts i get paid and either i i get into the play or i don't it's one of the things that that happened but uh, i think if they're at 35 dollars or so it's it's just a stupid price